morning, everyone, and greetings from Baltimore. I'm Patricia Davidson, Dean of the Johns Hopkins School of Nursing. On behalf of our school and the whole of the Johns Hopkins community, I welcome you here today to the May 2020 Johns Hopkins School of Nursing graduation ceremony. This virtual format is the first of its kind in our school's 130 year history, and I hope it is the last. It saddens me greatly today that we have to engage in social distancing. Watching you walk across the stage to the smiles and applause and hugs of your family and colleagues is truly one of my favourite moments of the year, and it is for my colleagues as well. Simply put, you have been an amazing class. Yes, the events and trials of the last few months have shown your drive, your flexibility, your smart and your leadership. But we already knew that. Long before COVID-19, you had shown to us your nursing spirit and commitment. Despite the disappointment that we're not physically here together, there's no discounting the meaning of this day. Your graduation falls in 2020, the year of the nurse and the midwife designated to mark the 200th birth of Florence Nightingale, the founder of modern nursing. Your future begins or more rightly expands right now. The need and value of nurses has never been greater or clearer. This is your time and we urge you to seize it fully. We are honored to call you Johns Hopkins nurses. And that is something that neither COVID-19 nor anything else will change or take from you from this day forward. You have been challenged and you have succeeded, perhaps even beyond what you would have dreamed possible. Good for you and good for nursing. And we recognise that you have not done it alone. And so do the spouses, partners, parents, grandparents, children and friends of the graduates. I would like to acknowledge you and your contributions to this momentous day. I would also like to thank the School of Nursing faculty and staff for their help in putting this exciting program together and for their service to our students, no matter the challenge. They are wonderful. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you our 2009 alumnus and US Congresswoman Lauren Underwood the youngest African-American woman ever elected to Congress. She understands healthcare and compassion from many angles, as a public health nurse, as a heart patient, and as a senior advisor in the US Department of Health and Human Services, helping to implement the Affordable Care Act, bringing coverage to millions of Americans. During her time in the Obama administration, she also helped communities all across the country prevent, prepare for, and respond to disasters and public health emergencies. Today, Congresswoman Underwood uses her strength, confidence, and compassion to steer the conversation on health care policy back towards what is right and just. Please welcome Lauren Underwood. Good morning, it's an honor to be with you today. I'd like to extend my greetings to Dean Patricia Davidson, Executive Vice Dean Marie Nolan, the faculty at the School of Nursing, and to all of you, the class of 2020. Thank you for the honor of addressing you on the day of this critical milestone. I am so glad to celebrate with you. Now, usually we would be downtown Baltimore at the Hippodrome Theater with our friends and family looking on. But these are not normal times. Your coursework has been completed virtually. Many of you continued working at your clinical sites under exceptionally difficult and even heroic circumstances. You took opportunities to volunteer on the front lines and the training and teamwork of students like Misa Ernst have been critical in running the biocontainment unit. Your places of work and your lives have been impacted by this public health crisis in an extreme way. For the average American, the coronavirus pandemic has sharpened into focus the critical contributions of nursing. Simply put, the practice of nursing and the training you received here at Hopkins, the best nursing school in the nation, are more important than ever. 
your commitment to facts, to science, and evidence-based decision-making will see our patients, our communities, our public health systems, and our country through this crisis. Your clinical skills, which are needed for the immediate battle against COVID-19, are just the very beginning of what you have to offer our country. And your leadership skills, both those you had when you first stepped foot on the East Baltimore campus and those that your faculty meticulously cultivated over your time here at the School of Nursing will transform our profession over the decades to come. We know, perhaps now more than ever, the importance of leaders who make fact-based decisions and who create policy that's grounded in science. And that a leader's commitment to excellence can save lives, usher in new eras of innovation and breakthroughs, and inspire others to step up and serve. That dual commitment to leadership and excellence is what inspired me to come to Hopkins in the first place. When I arrived on campus in the summer of 2008, I was 21, the youngest member of my class. I was ambitious, excited, and ready to chase after opportunities with an open heart and mind. I was living a block away from the School of Nursing in an unfamiliar, low-income African-American community. The fall ushered in a recession, which ground to a halt the urban renewal in my neighborhood. It further illuminated the poverty in our East Baltimore community and the inequality in our nation's healthcare system. And the downturn accelerated the urgent sense of purpose that I pursued my work on health disparities. I quickly accepted a job as a research fellow at the National Institutes of Health Clinical Center, where I worked with nurse researchers to better understand clinical trial participation among minority patients in an effort to tackle that long-standing equity issue. I later worked as a research nurse here at the School of Nursing on another health disparity study. In my coursework, I focused on improving African-American birth outcomes, examining infant mortality and preterm birth rates, and evaluating policy interventions like expanding Medicaid and funding nursing edu education. It was a little over a decade ago that I was in your shoes, graduating from the MSN MPH program. At that time in 2009, more than 40 million Americans lacked health insurance, and I saw a transformative opportunity in the Affordable Care Act to increase access to care and improve the health of the American people. I'm so grateful that I had a chance to work on the Affordable Care Act implementation after graduation. My interest in and commitment to ending disparities in maternal child health outcomes continued in the Obama administration, where I later helped to advance equity with the White House Council on Women and Girls. As I was serving out the last few days of the Obama administration, my classmate and good friend from the MPH program, Shalon Irving, was giving birth to her beautiful baby daughter, Soleil. Just three weeks later, Shalon collapsed and passed away from complications from high blood pressure related to her pregnancy. She was just 36 years old. Shalon was an epidemiologist at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, where she worked to investigate and eliminate health disparities. She was highly educated with a doctorate. She was excited to be a mom. She had done everything right, and we still lost her. I couldn't believe it. Her death was a devastating reminder of the disparities that women of color face in our healthcare system. The statistics are unacceptable. Black women are three to four times more likely to die from pregnancy-related complications than white women, and more than twice as likely than women of other races. Maternal health outcomes, which have been improving worldwide, have worsened over the course of my lifetime in America. Here, right here, in 2020, in the United States of America, the richest country in the world. Looking back, I can see it was my training at Hopkins as a nurse and in public health that gave me the grounding and evidence-based decision-making that's not only essential to nursing, but in policymaking. That foundation and Shalon's story, which I carry with me in Congress every day, inspired me to co-found the Black Maternal Health Caucus to take on these disparities through evidence-based legislation. It's why this year I introduced bipartisan legislation to take urgent acts action to address our nation's maternal health crisis and to finally end the racial disparities in maternal outcomes. And I'm proud to say more than 100 members of Congress have joined me in this effort. 
Don't ever doubt that change is possible. As nurses, we have a skill set that can improve health and save lives. Undoubtedly, you've seen how critical that skill set is in your clinical work. But today, I want to challenge you to take your skills beyond the clinical setting. Yes, you're incredible clinicians and brilliant researchers, but Hopkins also trains us to be leaders. And leadership requires us to look beyond the immediate horizon, to solve problems, to innovate for breakthroughs in clinical practice, and to change the world. Your professional training and personal experience has equipped each of you to be leaders on your unit, in your hospitals, across your communities, throughout this country, and around the world. We don't have the luxury of waiting for someone else to step up. After all, 2020 was named by the World Health Organization as the year of the nurse and the midwife. When the announcement was made in the spring of 2019, they had no idea that we'd be battling a pandemic and nurses would be on the front lines of that fight. But around the world, nurses have stepped up and met the moment, and now you will too. Your training and your leadership are critical in this crisis today and in transforming the health system in this country long after the pandemic. Together, we can finally end the healthcare disparities that far too many patients face. And we can remove the barrier of costly, unaffordable care that hurts millions of Americans every year. Simply put, we need you as advocates and as leaders in your communities. So share your stories and share them loudly and advocate for your patients and your fellow nurses and healthcare workers. But beyond advocating in your communities, know that you yourself are uniquely equipped to lead. Your ability to make evidence-based decisions grounded in science will save lives now. And when we come through this pandemic, it'll be critical to ensuring the success of our society for years to come. Your professionalism, your training, your leadership, and your unparalleled skill set have always been needed in this world. But right now, you are needed more than ever. Now, don't think that that means that you can't celebrate a little bit. Today, you should reflect on all the sacrifices that you and your families have made to get you to this stage. You deserve some time to mark this massive accomplishment today. You did it. But guess what? Tomorrow and in the weeks and months and years to come, your nation will need you. And I know that you'll be ready. And remember, in the year of the nurse and the midwife, your classmates, your faculty, and the whole Hopkins community are with you. We are supporting you as you work to change the world. And I can't wait to see what you do next. I'm so honored to celebrate with you. Congratulations and thanks again. Thank you for that inspiring message, Congresswoman Underwood. We appreciate your time today and leadership during this international health crisis. We are so proud to call you one of our own. Each year, the Johns Hopkins University Alumni Association recognizes the critical importance of teaching and mentoring at Johns Hopkins by asking each school to select faculty for the Excellence in Teaching Awards. At the School of Nursing, students vote for faculty members who have consistently demonstrated outstanding teaching skills. These include preparation, organization, thoughtfulness, knowledge of the subject, feedback, creativity, and inspiration. Two faculty members were selected for the award this year. The first faculty member to receive the award is Dr. Martha Abshire. As part of the 2020 Excellence in Teaching Award, one of her students commented, Martha truly cares about the well-being of students in order to help them succeed academically as well as growing personally in their pursuit of nursing. Congratulations, Dr. Abshire. The second faculty member to be selected for the 2020 Excellence in Teaching Awards is Dr. Rebecca Wright. I'd like to share a comment from one of her students. Dr. Wright is extremely knowledgeable and thorough in every class I've taken with her. I think she strikes a great balance of providing necessary feedback while encouraging her students and reminding them that their hard work and effort is appreciated. I have thoroughly enjoyed the opportunity to learn from her. Congratulations, Dr. Wright. 
congratulations to both of our faculty members for these very well-deserved awards. Each year, we have an impressive number of students inducted into Sigma Theta Tau, the International Honor Society for Nurses. It is an outstanding accomplishment as membership is by invitation to students who demonstrate excellence in scholarship. Sigma's vision is to create a global community of nurses who use knowledge, scholarship, service and learning to lead in improving the health of the world's people. It is the very definition of a Hopkins nurse. I would like to recognise and congratulate all of our students who have become part of Sigma this year. I would now like to introduce to you Executive Vice Dean, Dr. Marie Nolan, to recognise the Alumni Association and to lead you in reciting the Johns Hopkins School of Nursing Pledge. From the moment you decided to come to this school, you entered a strong, passionate and committed network of Hopkins nurses. It is my pleasure today to not only congratulate you on your graduation, but also on becoming a Johns Hopkins School of Nursing alumni. Your alumni network extends beyond this campus with all Hopkins alumni all over the world and across virtually every walk of life. I encourage you to take advantage of this network as you navigate your way through life after Hopkins. Tradition is very important at Johns Hopkins and in the profession of nursing. The tradition of pinning and the history of the nursing pin is a very symbolic and important part of becoming a nurse. In your graduation packet, you each received either the Alumni Association pin, if you're new to nursing, or the Maltese cross pin, if you're already a nurse. The Johns Hopkins Nurses Alumni Association proudly continues the tradition by supporting the awarding of your nursing pin. Take this opportunity to be pinned either virtually or in person by a loved one or a mentor and send us a picture so we can share your accomplishment on social media. Congratulations and welcome fellow nurses and alumni. Will all students please join me in saying the nursing pledge found in the back inside cover of your program. I also invite all nurses that are in the audience to please join us in saying the pledge. As I enter the nursing, nursing profession, profession, I pledge to use all the knowledge, skills, and understanding that I possess, accept wellness as a human right, promote this with individuals, families, and communities while honoring my own well-being. Practice with cultural humility, treat each person with respect, and listen that I may give a voice to the voiceless. Hold all the professional confidence, all the personal information and trust to me. Honor our history and forebears by building upon the advancements of science, innovation, research, policy, and knowledge. Collaborate across disciplines, cultures, and nations. Mentor those who come after that they can grow, learn, and gain confidence. Be a light that guides those who care for more vulnerable, difficult, and painful times. Thank you to Dr. Nolan and all of our students. I would now like to invite our first student speaker, Emily Bob, Master of Science in Nursing, Entry into Nursing Candidate, to share her remarks. Thank you so much for allowing me the honor of being the student speaker for the Spring 2020 Virtual Graduation Ceremony. I wish that we could be celebrating this momentous occasion together in person. The pomp and circumstance has lost its glow over the internet. However, I pray it will not dampen our spirit of joy and celebration at this momentous achievement of this class graduating with degrees from the Johns Hopkins School of Nursing. We celebrate a variety of degrees across many programs, including MSN Entry into Nursing, Master's Specialty, DNP Executive, DNP Advanced Practice, and PhD programs. Some like me are obtaining their first degree in nursing. Others have obtained the highest education and honor one can obtain in the field of nursing. Let us celebrate the hours of reading, writing, practice, blood, sweat, and tears that have brought us all to this moment. Let us also celebrate and show our appreciation for those who came alongside us on our journey. Let us thank our mentors, teachers, instructors, patients, classmates, families, and loved ones who supported and taught us along the way. 
This achievement we share with you. We could not have done it without you. I feel as though I'm obliged to share a quote when delivering an address. I stumbled upon this quote by the great 20th century author C.S. Lewis while listening to one of his books, Walking to Class, back when class is in person. C.S. Lewis is perhaps best known for his beloved children's series, The Chronicles of Narnia. However, The Weight of Glory is a collection of essays written and delivered to encourage the British people during the uncertain times of World War II. In one of his addresses entitled Learning and Wartime, he said, we're always falling in love or quarreling, looking for jobs or fearing to lose them, getting ill and recovering, following public affairs. If we let ourselves, we shall always be waiting for some distraction or other to end before we can get down to our work. The only people who achieve much are those who want knowledge so badly that they will seek it while conditions are still unfavorable. Favorable conditions never come. I would venture to say that we are in the midst of unfavorable conditions, yet here we all are. What a glowing testament to our hunger for knowledge and our persistence in acquiring it. In addition to acquiring knowledge, I feel as though over time, Hopkins nursing students acquire things to put on their ID badges. One of the many things I have accumulated is a pin given to me by one of my clinical instructors, Oli. At the conclusion of our clinical rotation, she gave us all pins with the inscription, nursing is a work of heart. I will admit, I did not want to wear it because I thought it made me look weak. I thought having heart meant being soft, kind, gentle, and sweet. But when I think about the anatomy and pathophysiology of the heart, it is strong, steadfast, electric, powerful, intuitive to the body's needs and responsive to change. Today, I proudly wear that pin on my ID badge as a reminder of the strength we have as nurses when we courageously serve with our hearts. I no longer fear being a nurse that leads with her heart, for having heart makes me strong. As nurses, let our hunger for knowledge and our hearts for service urge us to press on despite these current unfavorable conditions. Honestly, I can think of nothing else more fitting to happen in the year of the nurse than a global pandemic. In this time, we can let the world know what the field of nursing really can do. We have the responsibility to use our wealth of knowledge to go out and make a difference in the world in whatever capacity to which we are called. This could be in writing policies, teaching the next generation, working at the bedside, educating, leading, etc. Whatever the future holds for this class, wherever we are across the world, I can confidently say, we got this. Class of 2020, we did it. Thank you, Emily, for your encouraging remarks. I now welcome Tuji Lamu, Doctor of Nursing Practice candidate, to share her remarks. Good morning, Dean Davidson, distinguished faculty, guests, and fellow graduates. It is an honor and privilege to join you in celebrating the graduating class of 2020. I also want to take a moment to recognize the contributions of our healthcare peers here at Hopkins nationally and worldwide. Speaking to this diverse group of health professionals, I'm profoundly aware of the different paths we have taken to get here. My own journey to Hopkins was unpredictable. I was born in the tiny Himalayan kingdom of Bhutan, located between China and India to unique parents who were champions of education, especially women's education knowledge they stressed was the key to financial independence. Now, like many Asian parents, mine encouraged careers in engineering and medicine. My older sister obviously was a better child because she became a physician and today directs Bhutan's public health system. I, on the other hand, chose journalism. As one of the few journalists in the country, I got to travel the globe, meet world leaders and tell stories that might not have been told. Reporting in a country where many towns and villages were inaccessible by roads, where accommodations were often a tent in the wilderness or a mattress in someone's home was a challenge. But all these experiences laid the foundation to my belief that I could do anything if I put my mind to it. Then I came to America, where despite having an advanced degree and experience running an entire editorial department, the only job I could find was in debt collection. And as I sat at my desk, making calls to people who probably had less than I did, I never imagined that someday I would be standing here. Perhaps unknown to me, my journey to Hopkins had already started. 
So today, as we reflect on our individual journeys, I hope you will look back at this time at Hopkins as one of personal achievement. Despite the disruptions and doubts, you have persevered and achieved your academic goals. You have stepped up as healthcare professionals to volunteer, to serve and show the best qualities of humanity. You have put others before yourselves. We also acknowledge our exceptional faculty under the leadership of Dean Davidson, who has helped us transition seamlessly to this new normal. The last few months are a powerful reminder of the healthcare challenges facing America and the world. Watching this pandemic unfold, many of us felt that healthcare in the United States had stepped back several decades as we witnessed our colleagues battling this global and often fatal disease with binder covers, bandanas, and garbage bags. Our healthcare system is in crisis and the time for change is long overdue. What we need now are healthcare leaders with knowledge and experience in direct patient care so that in times of crisis, they put patients and staff of wealth profits. What we need are nurses to speak up when in our clinical judgment, the safety of ourselves, our patients, and our communities are at risk. And finally, we need national and global leadership to base their decisions affecting millions of people on scientific research rather than on politics and fear. Therefore, as we graduate at this critical point in healthcare, we have much to do. And as graduates from a globally recognized educational institute of excellence, much is expected of us. As we prepare to leave Hopkins, I want to remind you of the immense power you hold as members of the voting electorate and as health professionals who have and will continue to be on the forefront of patient care. I also ask you to look back at the idealistic you who wrote those admission essays filled with optimism. That idealistic you who felt we could do more to fix this broken system. And I hope you take that same drive, that same idealism that brought you here, out there into the world to innovate and advocate for the healthcare changes that our patients, our country, and this world so desperately needs. I end with a quote from President Lincoln's second inaugural speech, which I think is very appropriate for our world today. With malice towards none, with charity for all, let us strive to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have won the battle, and to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves, and with all nations. Congratulations, class of 2020. And yes, we got this. Thank you and Tashi Dele. Thank you, Tuji, for sharing your remarks with your fellow graduates. I now invite Dr. Susan Render, Associate Director of the DMP Advanced Practice Track to announce the name of our graduates. We will now recognize the class of 2020 Johns Hopkins School of Nursing graduates and award recipients. If you are the recipient of an award, it will be announced following your name. We will begin with our Master of Science in Nursing, Entry into Nursing Students. Marie Aguinaldo. Marie is the recipient of the Johns Hopkins Nurses Alumni Award. Carrie Kathleen Alvers. Elizabeth Winslow Aldridge. Daisy Aneth Alvarez and Annalisa Amburn Mary Kate Ames Meshi Amzalog Katina Maria Athanas Adiva Lee Berkowitz Albert Burnaby. Albert is the recipient of the Eleanor Wade Custer Award. Matthew Blotzer. Ashley Danielle Booth. Emily Bopp. Emily is the recipient of the Sinai Nurses Alumni Association of Sinai Hospital Incorporated Award. Shannon Boche. Allison Grace. Bradbury. Just Karen Jode Carr Borar. Johanna Elizabeth Brophy. 
Jessica Boodleman. An Bui. Haley Busby Aguirre. Allison Butler. Olivia Fallon Caldwell. Jenny Michelle Canales. Steve Yunsuk Che. Craig Chilton. Hillary Chu. Hillary is the recipient of the Betty Cuthbert Award. Sophia Zoe Callagher. Kaylee Marie Connolly. Ashlyn Nicole Cook. Charlotte Costello. Shay Nicole Crosby. Claire Deneen. Nicole Donay. Caitlin Marlene Eitz. Juliet Mei Ying Urcolano. Dafkar Errol. Dafkar is the recipient of the Robert G. Merrick Award. Megan Fawcett. Rochelle Filippello. Emily Flores. Emma Folkman Wagner. Molly Fox. Katerina Frickleton. Rachel Lynn First. Tatiana Maria Gallego. Tatiana is the recipient of the Emma Jones Beckwith Cullen Award. Shannon Garrett. Jasmine Gill. Judith Jennifer Gomez. Kennedy Gregory. Larissa Kirsten Haydu. Jennifer Johan Hayes. Catherine Hellman. Francisco Hernandez. Yumiko Hiroto. Jennifer Lynn Hoffman. Abby Homan Nelson. Abby is the recipient of the Research Award. Jane Sun Hong. Desol Amy Huang. Amy is the recipient of the Johns Hopkins Nurses Alumni Award. Mashi Jami. Emily Johnson. Shania Maria Johnson. Irene Kalazidis. Robin Kung. Carolyn Inku Kim. Carrie Emiko Kimura. Lee Caden Kirby. Luisa Kostreski. Emily Gaverna Coons. Chloe Ann Kwan. Chloe is the recipient of the Research Award. Rebecca Hillary Lang. Rebecca is the recipient of the Joan Sutton Award. Alyssa Latimus. Rachelle Loriano. Mary Lavery. Andrew Larzachik. Alex Young Hoon Lee. Christina Lee. Karen Grace Lee. Karen is the recipient of the Research Award. Roche Logan. Ina. Lotahina, 
Amanda Lutz. Kayla Ray Madison. Jordan Mizul. Laura Mangano. Corey Aaron Martin. Catherine Elizabeth McCullough. Morgan McCluskey. Sydney McMillan. Samantha Olivia McNamer. Jarvia Brianna Meggett. Jarvia is the recipient of the Robert G. Merrick Award. Savannah D. Ming. Savannah is the recipient of the Johns Hopkins Nurses Alumni Award. Sophie Tenzin Chosang Mengele. Julia Mercedes. Alexis Mesner. Nicole Diana Menahan. Charlotte Mitchell. Aaron Kylie Morrison. Stephanie Ann Munoz. Alyssa Marie Murad. Robert Heath Neff. Henry Nwusu. Bianca Palmasano. Bianca is the recipient of the Academic Excellence Award. John Park. Chelsea Lachelle Patillo. Rachel Elizabeth Paulson. Kimberly Peer. Ashley Brenna Pilcher. Kaylin Polly. Dominique Randall. Mishkan Rasul. Emma Lavina Brink. Hannah Jones Brittler. Kaylee Robinson. Maya Robinson. Leslie Robledo. Lauren Marsha Ricecamp. Napreeth Singh Sunder. Napreeth is the recipient of the Church Home and Hospital Nursing Alumni Award. Megan Marie Sauer. Nora Catherine Scanlon. Allison Sena. Kaylee Simpson. Jill Marie Slattery. Jill is the recipient of the Edna Schoen Memorial Award and the Emma Jones Beckwith Cullen Award. Anne Blake St. Clair. Anne is the recipient of the Academic Excellence Award. Emily Rose Stanford. Hilary Anne Stenvig. Ashley Nicole Stenson. Taylor Stofko. Sarah Ann Strohmeyer. Stephanie Hulam Tam. Christina Hope Tarozi. Talia Taylor. Cara Ann Tenerelli. Midori Elizabeth Trojanowski. Midori is the recipient of the Eleanor Wade Custer Award. Kevin Nicholas Valentine. Natasha Velez Correa. Natasha is the recipient of the Betty Cuthbert Award. Emily Quinn Hung Vo. Trevor Vo. Mark Volpe. Mark is the recipient of the Mary and Granger Marburg Award. Wesley Wang. Amy Watcher. 
Brielle Weber. Joseph Ari Weber. Megan Marie Young. We will now recognize our Master of Science in Nursing Specialty students, Tracy Nicole Bradley Simmons. Kyle Brashear. Stephen Michael Campbell. Lillian Joy Hammerlin Kanamo. Brittany Michelle Collins. Jean-Marie Sante Glass. Heather Ann Hackett. Stephanie Hahn. Hadiza M. Edrisu. Jordan Kahan. Amanda Kathleen Kelly. Delia Lynch. Melissa Cormack McCoy. Melissa Munya. Darlene Sue Norton. Kara Bajasek. Meredith Amber Schofield. Lucy Stewart. We will now recognize our Joint Master of Science in Nursing, Master of Public Health graduates, Maria Hartley. Emma Pearson Jigazia. Amber Marie Johnson. Desiree Lagro. Congratulations to all of our Master of Science in Nursing and Joint Degree graduates. We will now recognize our student receiving a post-master's certificate. Kathy Odell Hilo. Congratulations to our post-master's certificate recipient. We will now recognize our Doctor of Nursing Practice Executive Track students. Jahan Marie Daly Adamji. Courtney Ann Beekler. Margaret Teresa Birdsong. April Michelle Riyat Kamaling Burke. Allison Helton Carter. Elizabeth Kelly Kaislin. Catherine Teresa Ciccolini. Kimberly Marie Krim. Anita David. Asha Elsa Dimla. Lee McGrath Anger. Angela Yvonne Felton Coleman. Regina Marianne Greco. Bernice Beatrice Horton G. Francis E. Huang. Marini Kim. Stella, Stella Machizo. Emma, Emma Caroline Mangano. Beatrice R. Marseille. Beatrice is the recipient of the Outstanding DNP Project Award. Megan Alexandra McCulloch. Elizabeth Mole. Sharon Park. Sharon is the recipient of the Ruth Dale Ogilby Award. Douglas Reed. Christine Cloby Rook. Madupe C. Savage. Madupe is the recipient of the Nurse Leader Executive Mentorship Award 2019 2020 the Freilich Award. Lindsay Simler. Amanda McPherson Shafton. Amanda is the recipient of the DNP Leadership Award. Jean Barbara Thorpe Williams. Brandy Torres. I am now very excited 
to recognize our inaugural class of our Doctor of Nursing Practice Advanced Practice Track students. Christine Arietta. Christine is the recipient of the DNP Leadership Award and the Nurse Leader Executive Mentorship Award 2019-2020, the Freilich Award. Kenjal Anand Bhatt. Kenjal is the recipient of the Outstanding DNP Project Award. Jamie Lynn Bridell. Kimberly Ann Ford. Marcella Ophelia Hill. Hannah Rose Jacob. Hannah is the recipient of the Ruth Dale Ogilby Award. Christina Kang. Lindsay Marie Huang. Tuji Lamu. Br Bridget Denise Lockhart. Megan McClowry. Jennifer Nguyen. Corinne Elena Roberto. Corinne is the recipient of the Johns Hopkins Nurses Alumni Association Award. Anna Laura Savidra. Noelia Yesenia Solis Ramirez. Catherine Lynn Thompson. Claire Marie Tindula. Lisa Tran. Victoria Lynn White. Congratulations. We will now announce the recipients of the Doctor of Philosophy degree. Mona Behuth. Francoise Mbaka. Sophia Okoye. Congratulations to all of our doctoral students. Now join me in congratulating all of our new Johns Hopkins School of Nursing graduates. Thank you so much, Dr. Renda, and thank you to all of us for joining today. To the school's nursing class of 2020, you did it and you earned it. I know I speak for all of us when I tell you how proud we are have to watch a bright and compassionate group grow as caregivers and as people. This concludes today's ceremony. I urge you to remain courageous and caring towards your communities and towards one another, particularly as we fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Personally, I also hope you will return to walk in a future graduation ceremony. And please visit us. We wanna hear your stories and we want other students to follow in your footsteps. Here at the Johns Hopkins School of Nursing, you will always be with family. Please enjoy the rest of this amazing day in safety and in good health, and my sincere and warmest congratulations. You are a Hopkins nurse.